family, welcome back to our channel. And welcome back to another video. So I'm gonna be doing a clean with me, uh, kind of a cooking clean. I've got some keto prep to do, and I also have to wash the dishes. So we're coming pretty much to the end of the dishwasher where it is really just not working right. So what I'm gonna do is hand wash dishes. So I have a sink full of dishes. Normally I would not cook anything before the dishes were cleaned, but I wanna get the Instant Pot going first so that that's already coming up to pressure as I'm washing dishes. So I'm gonna just hop over to the side and get my chicken soup going. So we do a cauliflower um, keto chicken soup probably once a week, once every other week, just depending on if we have uh, rotisserie chicken or not. We do have rotisserie chicken tonight. So I'm using one half of uh, one chicken for uh, the soup and I'm gonna use another, the two chicken breasts from the other chicken to do chicken salad. So that'll be for this week's lunches. Soup will get us a couple of days. And I'm just ripping this off of the bone, off of the breast bone, that's just breast meat that I'm ripping off. And I'm just throwing it in. Um, it'll break down in the Instant Pot. And then I'm gonna take the legs, the wings, and the thighs and put those in the oven for dinner. Now, just Alana and I are eating meat. Jackson is still doing his vegetarian, living his best life. Um, and it's just working out. I mean, it's what he wants to do. It's not something we forced him to do or I forced him to do. It's just one day he said, Mom, I'm gonna be a vegetarian. And I said, okay, whatever you wanna do. So this soup I've made multiple times and it's just a quick, easy, instant pot soup. So I just pulled the breast meat off of the, uh, and I just used the two breasts on this one chicken. And I grab as much of it off as I can. Um, to this, I'm just going to add in some cauliflower. I'm going to add in whatever other veggies I can find in the fridge that I need to use up. I'm just going to throw those in. of the onion. I've got some carrots here. I didn't have a lot of veg in the fridge because we've used up quite a bit of it. But I do have some carrots. Put in a couple of those. Not too many. This is just a creamy chicken ranch soup. Got some seasoning blend, which has peppers. Then I'm just gonna toss in seasonings, whatever you like to season with. This is black pepper. Salt. Chili powder. Ranch dressing, ranch, ranch packet. And 
And we'll put the sour cream and the heavy cream in at the end. And I'm gonna add in two things of chicken broth. This is homemade chicken broth. going to make some dish water in the dish pan. We have always put the dish pan in here just so that we could catch all of the dishes. So I still haven't made a decision on the um, dishwasher just yet. Still thinking about it. I'm not real sure what I'm going to do. I'll be looking at some point. It's not today. So of course, growing up on the farm, we washed dishes. We did not have a dishwasher growing up. We were the dishwashers. Myself and several other um, relatives. Uh, my grandmother adopted four girls and I was one of the four girls. My mom's mom adopted four girls and I was one of those four that came to live with her and my grandfather when I was a little girl. And so I was from the big city and <laughs> transplanted to the farm. Uh, didn't know anything about being a farm girl, but I learned real fast. Uh, things were just done differently on the farm. And my grandmother had a system for everything we did in our life. Um, so a lot of times people say, Shakima, you never stop. You always keep going. You're moving, moving, moving. That's how my grandparents were. Both my grandparents, my grandmother and my grandfather. From the time we got up in the morning until six o'clock every morning, no matter what day of the week it was, there was always something to do. And so I've just learned that, that those uh, habits over the years, uh, and they're very hard to break. Even when you know your body just needs a rest, sometimes I don't do that. And end up, you know, my body will tell me to rest. So, um, my grandmother had a very strict regimen about cleaning, which is why I'm always cleaning. Uh, so I'm gonna just wash this sink out before I put the bucket back in to wash the dishes. <laughs> So, Shakima, you're washing the dishes in a bucket. Why must the sink be clean? Because my grandmother said so. And she's been passed on for a long time now. Um, but that's just how it was. Um, I don't fight against what I was raised. This is just how it was. And it's just how it is. It's, it's done me well. Um, my grandmother used to say, people will judge you on two things when they come to your house, your kitchen and your bathroom. They will determine whether they're coming back on those two spaces. And so we always try to at least have a clean bathroom uh, when we know we're having guests over. Of course, we like a clean bathroom, but if we know somebody's coming to the house and we have not had a chance to get to those areas, uh, we will definitely make sure that the bathroom is clean. So I think what I'm gonna do is just wash up these dishes and kind of chit chat about uh, a challenge that I'm getting ready to start. And my grandma always washed um, cups first, silverware, 
and then your glassware. So I'm going to wash these cups out and then we're gonna just sit everything in the dishwasher. Instead of buying a strainer or a drainer for the clean dishes, I'm just gonna sit them into, i wash this side of the sink out as well. Sit them in the dishwasher so that they can dry uh, while uh, we make a decision on the dishwasher. So what I'm deciding is uh, back in January, every January, Tony from A Boat Full of Lemons does her 14 week um, declutter organization challenge. I've done it for the last three years. This year, I made a purposeful decision that said I was not going to do the challenge until June because I wanted to make sure that I was off from work and I could do the challenge. So my plan is to start this challenge in June, which is just around the corner. So the first uh, Saturday in June, is going to be the sixth. Oh, we actually have a fifth. We have a fifth Saturday in May. So I probably will start the fifth Saturday in May because I'm only working four more days. I'm only working four days in June. I took the fifth day off, which was the optional to work day. I did take that day off. And so that will give me kind of a leg up. And I will tell you guys the areas that I'll be doing because some of the areas that she does in her uh, challenge, I do not have in my home. I don't have a kid's playroom. I don't have like an entryway uh, or a foyer. I don't, I don't have any of that. Um, so I may do a couple different spaces. I may take two weeks in the garage because I just really need to spend some time in my garage. We're gonna pull everything out. Hopefully by then, by the time I get to the garage, my sister will have had found her place and uh, we'll have moved her things out. And if not, we'll work around her stuff because it's not that bad. But I just have stuff in my garage that I've been carrying around from house to house. And if you haven't used it, and I'm not gonna put it in the attic space because I it, we haven't used it. So it must go. Um, anyway, this is Alana's least favorite thing to do are dishes. And so mom is going to gift her by doing the dishes for her, especially the washing, because I just believe they all need to be done a certain way. Uh, and I wanna make sure that they are clean when I put them in here just to drain and dry. So she does not enjoy washing dishes. Not that it's my favorite activity of life, but I can be okay with it. So, um, I am going to take the full week in the kitchen and just, uh, go through all the cabinets, every cabinet, cabinet by cabinet. I'm going to declutter. I am going to be, uh, my friend is going to come over and help me. My friend Kathy is going to come over and help me to redo the table that I have in the middle of the kitchen that we're using as an island. So I will be redoing that project. I've just been waiting for the summer to happen before I redid that project. And, um, she is going to come help me. I've been helping her do some stuff and organizing and all that type of thing. And so she is going to come over and help me uh, do that. So that's gonna be great and lovely. And um, we're going to paint in the hallway and in the bottom of the bar area behind the kitchen needs a little bit of paint, some touch-up paint. Uh, we're gonna to totally, totally wipe down and all the spaces, baseboards, all of the spaces that need wiping down will be wiped. Okay. So that's gonna be good to be able to do and uh, just have a fresh palette. I wanna take down the curtains and uh, wash all the curtains, kind of do a spring clean, but for us, it'll be a summer clean. So tonight, I'm just getting the kids to do a little bit. We're probably going to get Jackson to run the vacuum cleaner while I work in this kitchen because my kitchen is the one area in my home that I cannot stand to have looking crazy. And sometimes the kids will fix a meal and then they'll leave stuff all over the house and it, it bothers me. So we're gonna get some meals started 
Um, we're going to do, I've got the soup going. We're going to get some uh, keto bagels going. I made a keto uh, carrot cake and I didn't love it. And I think the, the reason I didn't love it was because um, it had, I didn't shred my carrot up enough. I found it on Instagram and, and it was good, but I just didn't have my carrot shredded up enough. So I'm going to make it again and try to get my carrot shredded up a little bit more fine. So I'm gonna get the kids started on their little tasks that they need to do as far as helping me to empty out bowls and stuff so I can get stuff uh, washed up. And then we're just gonna keep on keeping on with our uh, cleaning. And I will share with you the spaces that I am planning for the home organization challenge. Um, soup going the dishes are done uh, we made, made sure that the fridge was clean because we're getting ready to do a large probably two-week grocery shop we really have not shopped um, little sporadic things here and there we went to Costco but since we um, did that large grocery shop in April we really 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 have not been doing quite a lot of shopping but I'm going to make some chicken salad. Now, of course, I go and do the shopping for my friend every week at Costco. I'm still shopping for her. She still does not feel ready to go out and resume her normal shopping. And so she has told me to pick up two chickens every week. And so I just pick that up for me and the kids. Um, sometimes when she comes on a, on a su Sunday for lunch, uh, we'll have chicken. But the last couple times she's come, we've had seafood because she's requested that. And so we had uh, shrimp or uh, fish in the freezer and we used that. And so then I still had the chickens. So what I'm doing now is again, just pulling off all the breast meat, all the tenderloin. We pulled off the legs and the wings and the thighs and we are gonna freeze those. Normally we would eat them, but we've been eating quite a lot of chicken. But I have these two breasts and so I'm gonna make some quick chicken salad for me and Alana. Of course, Jackson is still doing his vegetarian, which is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna grab, grab that one. And I'm gonna rough chop it. Last week I put it in the food processor and it just processed too fine for me. So I'm just gonna rough chop this chicken to make a chunkier chicken salad, which we like it fine ground, but I would prefer it more chunky. And so I'm just rough chopping this a couple times and I'll rough chop it the other way. Chicken salad for me is very simple. I do chicken. I do mayo, I do the sweet uh, sweet pickle relish, no sugar. Um, some people don't like sweet relish, we were not. We didn't grow up like that, we grew up on sweet relish chicken salad. Um, you can put a little bit of um, mustard in there if you want, we don't use mustard, and then some mayo, salt and pepper to taste, and you've got chicken salad. So I'm just gonna, like I said, give this a rough chop 
and I'll probably just shred it a little bit with my hands as well. But as I'm mixing it together and stirring it, it will uh, fall apart a little more. And I'm also gonna go ahead and put it in my container. I'm gonna just mix it in the container I plan to uh, leave it in. And this will be lunches for a couple of days. Now here's somebody over here begging. Begging. Ain't even supposed to be in this kitchen. She begging so bad. Bye, Felicia. Now just go on. What smells so good? Me. Jackson said, what smells so good? I had to let him know. Hmm. Me. It's my new perfume. It's called Mom. Wait, me or me? Me. No, lovely. You have no time for that. Go look and see if there's a can in there. Beans have to soak and they have to cook for a long time. You can't cook beans in 10 minutes. You Go can't? See no, lovely. Go see if there's a can of beans. I thought there was a can of black beans in there. Go see. I know there's a can of beans somewhere. He just came in at 6.30 and he trying to cook beans and rice. This is why. This is why you cannot be changing up your diet and not knowing what you're doing. So maybe tomorrow he'll make beans, but not tonight. Yes, lovely. What, babe? Please. Uh, would you grab this stuff over here that's going with it? I hope it will. If you um take the trash can or the trash bag and pull it out, some should be plenty of room. So again, I got all the dishes washed. That was pots. That was cups. That was um, bowls. That was all the plastic. Everything is washed. This right now. Uh, these are the only two dishes that I have that need to be washed, but I'm going to just put them in the sink for right now and come back and finish out that chicken salad. No, well, chicken is cheaper. And so sometimes when you're on a budget, so I'll chat with you guys. Um, Jackson just asked me a question. He said, Mom, why do we have so much chicken? He said, are we like a chicken family? And I said, well, no, not necessarily. But when you're on a budget, I have found that chicken tends to be one of the more uh, cheaper meats. It used to be, however. Not now during everything with the meat shortages and stuff like that. Now it's just as expensive as everything else. But before, uh, you know, chick, you could get a chicken. You could make that go a long way. You could have you know, chicken legs and wings one night, chicken thighs one night. You can have something else with chicken breast. Um, you could boil it for chicken stock and then make chicken soup. Um, you could just make chicken go a long way. We grew up on chicken at our house on the farm. My grandparents had chickens. Um, so it that's just, you know, it was cheaper than buying pork and beef. And so it's not necessarily that we're a chicken family. It's just, I can get that rotisserie chicken for $4.99 at Costco. I can't buy a whole chicken under eight to $10 here now at the regular grocery store. So I'd rather, you know, get the rotisserie one for $4.99 and go ahead and cut that up and use it in a couple different meals than to try to, you know, pay $10 for a chicken that's uncooked, the rotisserie chicken is already cooked. Let me live my best life, okay? All right. So again, when you're, you, you know, being frugal, you have to, you know, I've always had to watch my pennies when I was at the grocery store. I've never just, never, even now that I'm more financially stable than I've ever been, been just able to go to the store and buy whatever. That's not how I shop. Because I'm not going to get my family ahead to have reckless spending habits now when I work so hard to get us to a good place. So I still shop as frugally as I did before. My choices are more limited now with, with you know, just the meat. I was watching uh, Jay Morrell yesterday. She was doing a uh, grocery haul. I'm sure it came out before yesterday, but I was just getting to it yesterday. And she was talking about in her area, and she's in Virginia, how they could only get two meats at a certain store. I don't remember what store she said. I think she was at Aldi. I don't know that for sure. You have to go back and watch the video. That they could only, you know, get two meats. And that wasn't 
two different, like some stores will let you get two beef, two chicken, two porks. I don't know what store it was, but one store she could only get two p meats, period. And so she went to another store and she got two beef, two pork, you know, she just got two of everything. You know, she has a large family. And so again, I'm gonna shop within my means to make sure that I can get us everything we need for the month. And we have done well. So I know we, we are now in a point, in a place where I do have to go to the grocery store. So I just got a chunky chicken salad. That's what that looks like. That's already in a bowl that it's gonna stay in. And that's ready to um, rock and roll. I got a few more dishes that I am gonna wash. And then I'm gonna work on the, we're gonna work on what now? The um, bagels, we're gonna work on bagels. Let's do that. All right, you guys, so here's the kitchen, all clean. Dishes are all done, counters have been wiped down. Uh, you probably need to warm that more. Uh, Jackson is getting his meal out, but I've washed everything that needs washing. We have our cake in the oven. We were gonna do uh, the carrot cake again, but then Jackson said he liked the Southern Keto's cake better, that uh, bunt cake. Of course, I put it in two uh, eight inch rounds and so we're doing a lime tonight. We're doing lime. So the kitchen is clean. These are the last little bits of dishes that need to dry. And then what I washed earlier, I just went ahead and stacked in the, these are all clean. They're just sitting in there to dry. So we're just gonna um, use that as a drying system for right now until I get a new dishwasher because that's just what has to happen. Um, with that being said, I am gonna take you to um, a view of my desk and show you the cleaning challenge. All right, you guys, so I have two books that I'm gonna be pulling from. Um, this is Real Life Organizing. This is Cash from the Clutterbug, her clean and clutter free, free in 15 minutes a day. This is the first book she's written. I think she's written another one since then, or maybe two. I don't have any of those. I just have this one. Um, so I'm gonna be pulling from that one, but my main book, that I'm gonna be using is the complete book of home organization by Tony Hammersley from A Bowl Full of Lemons. So when I first started, um, when I joined her organization group um, and saw her 14 week challenge, this is the challenge that I um, wanted to do. So I'm gonna be looking through here and figuring out which of these things I can, uh, which of these weeks I'm going to be working on. Now, Nikki from um, At Home with Nikki has a, a organizational book and I would love to have that one, but I don't and I'm not randomly just spending money on stuff. So, you know, that's, I'm not living that spend the money life right now. And it's perfectly fine because this is what I use all the time or she actually sends it out in a PDF form. But since I have the book, I'll just use the book. So week one is the kitchen challenge, and then you do everything, uh, uh, create a recipe binder, um, bin your cans, store your medicines. So medicines come under kitchen using one door, organizing the pantry. So she's got that all broken down. And so that works fine. Week two is the pantry. Week three is the dining room. Now my dining room is not very big. So here's where I'm gonna be making some changes. So the pantry and the dining room may become one week because there's nothing to my dining room except the table, the kitchen table and the coffee station. So I may make that the dining room slash coffee station or I'll put that in with the kitchen, just de depending. Uh, then she goes over to part two which now I have the launch pad, which I don't have a launching pad. So I'm gonna have to rethink that one. Either I'm gonna create one or I'm gonna not do that one at all. And then I'll do the living room, which if I'm looking above this, she has bookshelves. I can do bookshelves instead of the launch pad because I have four bookshelves in my house. So, and they're all color coded and some books need to be rehomed. So this could be just the library or mom's personal desk space or, you know, something of that nature. That could be office since I don't have a launching pad. Then I've got the living room, the master bedroom, the master closet, um, the kids closet. 
Now, I don't have a linen closet, so I've got to find something to put here. This could be my, my in-bedroom office, or I could do the in-the-living-room office, or, you know, something of that nature. Then I have the bathroom, and I have two bathrooms, so I've got to do both of those bathrooms. Then she goes over here, and she's got one. This is part three. Uh, work in an outdoor. So I have the office, which is its own week. The playroom challenge. We don't have a playroom. Then we have uh, the laundry room challenge, then the garage, and then the car itself. So I think it's broken down into those three parts. And so I'm going to sit down and come up with my schedule of things that I'm planning to do. So I'm still helping my friend clean out her garage, uh, doing some work for her. So I know I'm probably going to be doing that the last Saturday of May. And we actually um, have been doing quite a lot of work in there. We've been three different times. We've been two Saturdays and we went on Memorial Day for the morning and we've gotten her in a good position. Now we still have probably another week or two to go over. So I'm probably gonna save May the 30th for hers. And then I'll start this challenge June the 6th, which is actually my tightest two women's in the morning, but I'll still have enough time. And I'm gonna pre-record, so this will be able to come out on June the 6th. You'll be able to see this June the 6th. So I actually probably need to be starting, um, I need to be starting this challenge here in the next day or so. Let me go back to my May days. Yeah, I need to be starting this, well, next week. I can start next week which June the 1st is on a Monday. So I will have that go live on the 6th, which I'm all, I know I'm going to start in the kitchen. So I love this book. Um, I One of the big problems that I have is I don't like to write in my books. And so I'll usually have sticky notes or whatever all through the book. And so I do like that she has, um, you know, all the pretty pictures and then she's got you know, zones, she divides this into zones, your cooking zone, cleaning, prep, storage, food, you know, all the things. So some of these I may not, you know, some of these things I may not have. She gives you quick tips on how to clean using baking soda and lemon, then make a sink cleaner DIY. Uh, moving over, she's got uh, create a best of station. So probably for me, you know, I'm not sure exactly what I'll do. I'm going to read through all of these because this is a little bit more in-depth than the PDF she sends out. Then another quick tip. And each weekly challenge is meant to be done within the seven-day period. And then she gives you, I like this over here, stock your baking cabinet, which I do have a baking cabinet. And so I'm going to go back through all of this to make sure that I have everything that I need in my baking cabinet. Now, I do want to get some, some different um, storage containers. I would like to get those square ones that have the pop uh, freshness seals at Walmart. But again, just going to take it light and like hers, like these. These are the square ones. So I'd like to get some square ones, but I have to buy mine a little bit at a time just because I'm not trying to go and spend a whole lot of, you know, money. So this says design a bacon station. I already have a bacon station. So I'm just going to um, go in and redo. 17 is designate a drinking station so that's the coffee station um i don't have this part which is the cocktail bar we we don't drink in this house so that's not something that i would have and then you know again all the pictures fridges labels i don't have a working label maker i used to have one but i can't figure out if it broke but it's okay so you know she's got all the things all the things so i'm just gonna work my way through this book over the summertime and make sure that I have everything that I need. Um, this is for the recipe binder. I already have a recipe binder, but I'm gonna go through it and make sure that I you know, clean it up a little bit. I may add in some of these um, tabs because I do have some tabs that I can use to print and just make it nice. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna be using for um, the 14 weeks, well, the 10 weeks that I'm off from school. And then from Cass's book, I'm just gonna go through and find little quick tips and things. See, I would like to add this into my baking station. 
where I have my, you know, conversion charts and my measuring utensils that I use quite often. That might be something that I can add in. Um, but she has a lot of neat little tips and tricks in here that would be helpful. So I'm just going to use both of these books to kind of get my life together. And then I'm going to take my calendar and write everything out and how I'm planning to do that. So that's my plan for now. I'm just going to, uh, I'll probably do an update video to let you guys know exactly what my weeks will look like and how I'm going to get that started. But I think my first video will come out the 6th of June, which will be the first Saturday in June. And that's actually going to be the first day of well, the second day of my summer break because I'm not working on the 5th. The 5th is the last official school day for teachers, but I'm taking that day off as a annual leave. So there it is. Thank you guys for coming along and watching us as we cleaned in our kitchen and did a little bit of keto meal prep. Um, I'll show you the cake and then we'll end this vlog. That can be the top layer. That's because it's hot. Ah. Note to self, let the cake cool. It'll be the bottom, it's okay. It's just because I didn't have my hand on there right. Let the cake cool, but it smells very limey because we, we're going to do I don't know, we're gonna do lemon, but I ended up not having um, any lemon extract. I had lime, so we did lime. I'm gonna make a drizzle for that. This is great value, 100% juice. It's lime flavor, though we don't really have a favorite flavor. It's just what we got. And then we have the um, Swerve Confectioners. So I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of the Swerve Confectioners. Uh, we don't want like, a, we used a um, cream cheese frosting on the carrot cake and that was a little thick for us. So we're actually just going to uh, do a light glaze. I'm using that and the lime juice since we have a lime flavored cake. And I'm just gonna get this to the right consistency to drizzle. We don't want it to be too thick. We just aren't real thick frosting folks around here. Cut for a while. She likes thick frosting almost as much as thick bologna. I'm gonna let Jackson give that a little taste and let me know what he thinks. Sweet. Not limey enough, let me see. I don't think it's limey enough. Flavor like just hits you. I forgot which uh, taste buds taste sweetness. I think the taste buds on the side taste bitterness. The side of your tongue. And then we'll just take a few We'll poke some holes. I hate that it broke. It was just because it was hot. Should have let it um, cool, but I was trying to get this done. Cause it looks so delicious and it smelled even better. And again, we don't like um, the thick. So we just usually pour it on top. Just enough to have something in the middle. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna put that second layer on top. Oh, doesn't it look so yellow? We did the lime. Oh! Is it breaking? Yeah, I felt it go. Not a bad time though. No, it wasn't as bad that time, but 
note to self, wait for it to cool. So if you make this at home, just wait for it to cool so that it doesn't break like ours did. But it's still gonna be yummy and lovely and we're still going to eat it. You can barely even see it. Barely even see it. And then the glaze, of course, will set it. So it'll help to seal up that crack. help seal up that crack. I'm gonna do just a tiny bit more so it can kind of go down the sides a little bit. So basically it's like edible glue that tastes like lime. Yeah. And we don't use confectioner swerve for anything else. Hardly ever. Except for the occasional powdering, which is occasional. occasional. You want me some money? Oh, now you want money? I see how you roll. Amazon gift card would be preferable. Really? Mr. Amazon gift card would be preferable? Bye bye. Let me live. Now the chocolate cake we made last week was bomb. Just bomb. And I'm gonna actually just go push it down because we already have glaze on the top. And we're actually really just wanting to get glaze on the sides. So to try to get that on the sides. And this will harden as it cools. And you'll just have that um, great glaze all the way through. So there it is, our keto, uh, we use the Southern Keto Cookbooks uh, bunt cake, coconut bunt cake. We just do it in two rounds and we just put whatever glaze or topping that we like on it. So anyway, there it is. Thank you guys so much for stopping by our channel. If you liked the video, thumb it up and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye guys.